Welcome back to Mid Suffolk and I brought you here to this backwards rape crop so that we can have a little chat about pollen beetle control and to have a strategy up our sleeves for if these pests arrive in large numbers because control could be difficult in crops like this which may well be susceptible from green bud to yellow bud for quite a long period of time. Now we've had some warmer temperatures recently and the pollen beetle have woken up from hibernation. They were on the field edge, they were in hedges and in leaf litter and uh, a 15 degree C they will have started to move from the edge of the field from hedges into the headlands and then they'll move further and further into the field and it's in the field that we should be looking when establishing whether or not we have a threshold for spraying pollen beetle and if you want to know what that threshold is I would suggest that you uh, look at the HDCA topic sheets that uh, give you very good guidance on that and that guidance will depend very much on your plant stand and whether or not your crop is let's say forward or backwards. Some of the forward crops may whip through the susceptible stages and uh, may sort of not cause us too much of a problem but these more backwards ones as I said before could be susceptible for a long time. Now here we have a green bud here and uh, this is the sort of stage that can be vulnerable if it sits at uh, this sort of stage for a long time and the pollen beetle lays its eggs and uh, then the larvae will be burrowing into those pod pods looking for pollen. Once the, the bud is open, um, really the, uh, the pollen beetle almost sort of switch from becoming, from being a pest to sort of more a pollinator, but uh, it's uh, this susceptible stage that we need to decide whether or not we're spraying. Now your strategy for spraying will very much depend on your experience with uh, pyrethroids in recent uh, years. If you're in an area where they're still working well, then perhaps you may well start your strategy by using a pyrethroid. But if you're in one of the areas where we've got increasing resistance and it's becoming more and more widespread, pyrethroid activity in these areas is becoming less and less uh, effective. And in this instance, assuming a threshold, you may well think about starting a strategy with a non-pyrethroid action, so perhaps Biscaya or Plenum or Rumo. The trouble is with all these actives for pollen beetle control, is whether it's pyrethroid or non-pyrethroid, is there's very limited uh, persistence. So even with some of the more persistent products so such as Rumo we can't really expect a lot more than 10 days persistence and that's if uh, temperatures are relatively cool. So we'll have to keep monitoring, have a strategy up our sleeve and wait and see really what happens in terms of the timing of the arrival of the pollen beetle and how that coincides with the crop growth stage and how fast or slow the crop is moving through those susceptible stages. So I'm rather hoping that uh, it's not going to be as bad as perhaps I'm thinking it will be, but uh, let's uh, just see what happens and, uh, and good luck. <laughs> 